What's going on, Junkie Nation? Gorgeous George and Goes reporting for duty here. Talking to Carl Moore, who's going to be headlining the upcoming Bellator Championship Series card taking place on March 22nd out in Belfast, Northern Ireland at the SEC Arena. He's going to be uh, fighting with Corey Anderson for the vacant light heavyweight title. What's up, Carl? How are you? Good, brother. Thanks. How are you? All right. Th doing great. You know, he's the more well-known name than you are. Of course. So, yeah. yeah um, tell the fans why you deserve this spot, spot, Carl. I've seen the resume. You've won your fights. You've earned your spot. But, you know, a lot of times people tie everything to the known commodities that are out there. And, of course, with the yeah. champ moving on, it's vacant. You're the lesser known of the two. Well, first off, before an arm call vacated the belt, I was the only guy in the division that the team hadn't fought. He'd beaten everybody else except me. Um, I'm 4 0. I'm undefeated in the promotion. And in them four fights, I've taken out the number fifth and the number sixth ranked guy in the division. So I think that speaks for itself. Uh, and when I fight, my fights are nearly always exciting too. I come to fight. So I think that speaks for itself, mate. Yeah. And where would you rank Corey? Is he pretty much the toughest guy you've ever faced now that you've been able to break down the film and, you know, apply your preparations for him? Um, possibly. Um, in terms of, like, on footage and on, like, paper, yes, I would say so. But, I mean, you won't know until you're in there. I mean, this fight could last five seconds. It could be the easiest fight you've ever had. Or could last twenty five minutes and be the toughest fight. Um, I won't know till I fight him on the night. But stylistically and on paper, you say yeah, this is probably the toughest matchup I've ever had. But it's for a world title, bro. What do you expect? You're fighting at the highest level. You're going to be exactly. fighting the best. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, in um, in well, I'm in South America right now, but I live in the United States. Okay. I like to gamble. I'll be honest. And a lot of times, the home team gets three points in basketball or football. When we're breaking down the those types of events, how about you? What do you think the home edge advantage will be for you uh, as he's coming to your neck of the woods? Um, me personally, I love the fact that I'm fighting in front of my own people in Belfast. It's a once in a lifetime experience, but for me personally, everything outside the cage is just irrelevant. Like I said, it's amazing, but when me and Corey's in there, everything outside is just background noise. It doesn't matter. It's me and Corey locked in our cage for 25 minutes. Everything I said is just, it's just, it doesn't exist. After the fight's over and I win, I can take it in, I can soak it in, appreciate everything, fighting in front of my own people, winning the belt. But for them, 25 minutes, it doesn't matter. It could be silence, it could be absolutely mayhem. I'm focused on the job at hand and that's it, bro. It can be in Belfast, Beirut, Bangladesh, it doesn't matter. The job's still the same. It's after the fight's over, then I can appreciate it and soak it all in. But for them, 25 minutes, doesn't matter where it is. That's, you know, my, my, that's my take on it. Anyway. Yeah. Brandon Marino just went through something similar in Mexico. He fought Brandon Royble. And yes. he told us as much. You know, it's, it's I, I, I guess, a little bit stressful to have that much pressure on you, you know, and uh, being the home home fighter, I guess you could say. Yeah. Uh, and that's why I asked that question. You know, some people thrive on it. Others are like, oh, man, like this is a lot to handle. What what has it yeah. been like for you? Like, are you getting a lot of attention? Uh, are you having to do more interviews? Are you, do you have friends coming out of the woodworks asking for tickets? <laughs> um, not like I, uh, I'm very hard to get a hold of on the phone. My best friends can't get a hold of me on the phone. So they know not to, not to talk to me for tickets regardless. But um, the media stuff's the hardest part for me yet because – like, I'll fight in front of 20,000 people, 2 million people. But stuff like this, you put me on a camera or on a microphone, it, I get nervous, I get awkward. Like, this is this is the hardest bit for me. And obviously, fighting for a world title, you're going to have to do more media, more cameras, and more videos and stuff like that. But that's the, the thing that I find most difficult, is this type of thing. This makes me more nervous than fighting, believe it or not. So talking to two Muppets, like me and that guy, that's well, tougher than facing Corey Anderson? You've got three Muppets here, so we're all together. We're all the same. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> we're all, don't worry. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Carl Moore joining us here on Junkie Radio. He's got a fight coming up, a title fight, folks, coming up on the 22nd of March 
that's where Bellator is going with the Bellator Champion Series. Uh, they will be fighting for the vacant title. Him and Corey Anderson, I should say, will be fighting for the vacant title in the light heavyweight division. Goes, what do you have for Carl Moore? Don't have any pressure on you. Our audience, they love to have fun. They like us to have fun with the fighters. So just have fun with us, man. Uh, let me ask you a little bit about this. When I see your fights, I see your fighting style. Uh, when we're breaking down fights, I can't imagine there's going to be really much of a feeling out process with you two. It seems like you're both going to meet in the middle and it's going to start from that first second. Uh, yeah, what do you see? What, what do you think? How do you feel about that? Do, do you want to ease into things or let's just get to it? Um, I don't know, Matt. I just, it's, I sort of, I just wing it. Like my whole life, I go in and just try and punch him in the face first and see what happens. Just take it from there. But I don't think there'll be a feeling process. I think the two of us, because there's so much at stake, will come in and we'll just meet in the middle and go at it. And in our weight class, it just takes one big shot for one of us to go. Um, I think after we start exchanging, Corey is going to try and wrestle. He's going to try and take me down. Or I'm just going to try and take his head off. That's <laughs> as simple as that. From the start, from the first minute to the last minute, I'm going to be going for the kill. When it comes to preparation for these types of fights uh, and regards to Corey Anderson, like how long did it take you to sit there with your team? Are you guys big on video? Uh, how long did it kind of figure out this is what we want to do and this is the direction we want to go in? Um, there's a little bit of that, but the type of fighter I am, mate, it's like I like to focus on more, more on what I'm going to bring because I think if I focus too much on him and hard to fight for him, I'm fighting to his rhythm. I'm fighting to his plan. But I want him to have to adapt to me. So I want to fight to the best of my abilities and go out and put my game plan on Corey. And he has to adapt to me. But there is a certain few things me and the teammates have looked at and we can do and we can tweak this and do this to make it a hard night for him. But 90% of the stuff is just focusing on what I'm going to do. Do you know what I mean? I want him to adapt to me. I don't want to be worrying too much about what he's doing. Do you know what I mean? So, Carl, George and I have been doing this show for 16 years. And in 16, 16 years, yeah, we're going on 17 in a month. Um, I've seen some pretty cool walkout shirts, but I've never seen a cool walkout sweater. Can we see the one you're wearing? That's that's pretty cool, man. I get some stuck in my chest. You're making me feel like I haven't gone through puberty yet, man. I'm 45 <laughs> years old. Um, all right. Last one from me. Uh, so. Corey Anderson, great opponent and all that. Yeah, um, your career in general, can you maybe point to one moment in your career where you felt like you knew exactly this is where I belong, this is what I want to do, and this is this is going to be my life? There's been a couple of those times, but the biggest one for me is the most recent one, probably. I've had a couple of those moments, but the most recent one was my fight with Carla Braxton after I was out for three years i dislocated my shoulder i had to get knee surgery um a couple other small injuries and then COVID happened and with COVID, i couldn't train for six months then after that bellator released myself and so many other fighters and then i got re-signed and then i got a fight with carl Braxton, who was ranked number five in the division at the time and i hadn't fought in two three years and nobody gave me a chance nobody gave me hope and hell even teammates and friends are like, why are you taking this fight? Like, this, you haven't fought in two years. This guy has a win over Vadim Nankov. He's only lost to uh, Phil Davis and Valentin Moldovsky. This isn't, this is too much too soon. And when I won that fight, I finished him in the second round. And that for me was, I'm exactly where I need to be. I'm on the correct path. And after that fight, I knew that was mm -hmm. going to put me to where I need to be now, to be fighting for a world title. So there's been numerous moments throughout my career but that win against Carl Braxton and everything around it and had happened before it and the build up to it, that was just, I knew this is, I'm on the right track and I'm right where I need to be. And my only way is up and I'm here. Less than two weeks, less than three weeks, sorry, I'll be fighting for the Bellator World title. You've had a few training camps now for five round fights and you've had yeah. one fight go the distance. How valuable is that for you? Now, even though this is going to be on a, on a bigger stage against a tougher opponent, but just knowing that you can push across 25 minutes, you know, a lot of times people go into title fights and they that's one thing that they're not sure of. I mean, for me, I fought five rounds in cage warriors for a world title, and like I had to get into that fight, I was barely able to train. I trained in a 12 week camp, I trained properly for four weeks, 
had multiple injuries, had a back injury, a knee injury, so I couldn't really train properly, and I still managed to do 25 minutes at a high pace. So I'm thinking to myself now, but a 12-week training camp behind me, full camp, no injuries, nothing stopped me training. I'm just wondering how much I can actually do. Obviously, it's a different fight. Corey's a guy that's going to be there for 25 minutes too, but I'm excited to see, like, I've done 25 minutes before, how much better will it be this time? Because I think Corey's one of his biggest things is his endurance and his gas tank. But I think I have that. That's something he's not going to be able to beat me on. I think I might just have better or just as good as endurance as him. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out on the night. How is the crowd in Northern Ireland to differ from Ireland, the UK, uh, sorry, the, uh, you know, like England and Wales, uh, and then proper Europe, like obviously England. Yeah. How, how would you say your people represent? Are are they pretty hardcore when it comes to MMA? Are they loud? Are they, you know, rambunctious and all that? I don't know how to say this without swearing and getting in trouble, but they're just different. They're crazy. I mean, it doesn't matter. You put them in boxing, you put them in a, a music festival or a concert, MMA fight, they're just different. Belfast people are just fucking crazy, excuse my language, but they will, they love it. I mean, it, it's you can't really describe it until you see it. The Dublin crowd, Dublin is unbelievable, but I think Belfast, they're the only different type of people altogether. So I think on that night, it'll be a different buzz altogether. So I fought in Dublin so many times, but I can't wait to fight in Belfast because it'll be crazy. I know. Well. <laughs> what got you into fighting, by the way? Um, I'll have to say it was my dad. Um, from when I was a kid, my dad always trained. He was always in shape. He'd done different martial arts for years. He's currently a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Um, but growing up, he didn't push me, but he just advised me to try different martial arts. Um, he took me to kickboxing, took me to boxing, took me to judo, took me to Muay Thai, took me to BJJ. But even as a young, at a young age, like I didn't really enjoy them. Because, like, for me, even, even as a kid, I understood they were only one aspect of fighting. Like, that's only one tiny aspect of a real fight. Because growing up where I grew up, you always get into fights. You have to be able to stand up for yourself. So you always get into fights. And when you get into a fight with someone, you don't agree to stand a punch. You punch, you kick, you pull, you wrestle, you end up rolling about the ground. And then when I found an MMA gym, I was like, this is it. This is the purest form of combat. This is all these martial arts integrated into one. And that's, I fell in love with it right away, man. When I found it, but but that definitely got me in the martial arts. He's the he's the man that got me in the way I'm today. That's awesome. Um, you know, we used to have a studio at the Mandalay Bay Hotel in Las Vegas for years, almost a dozen years, and then COVID kind of ended that. And so our world has been through video conferencing like we're doing now. But one thing I used to ask fighters was, can you can you share a good street fight story when they would come to our studio? Well, we don't have a studio. But I always love hearing street fight stories from people with foreign accents. They, they somehow produce the best stories. You have a good one you can share with us? Uh, there's, I mean, there's, there's so many I could share. I don't know if it would be okay for the thing, though. I'm just like, oh, trust me, we've heard it all bowling alleys, stadiums, samurai uh, swords, concerts, samurai swords, fraternity mm-hmm. parties. I'm sure, like, there's that many. I'm trying to pick one. To pick out one in particular, um, no, I mean, there's nothing, not one particular story. There's been so many. I mean, growing up where I grew up, like I said, you always had to be willing to stand up for yourself, you always had to be able to fight. Um, New Year's no. Eve coming out of a nightclub, nothing like that, nothing rings a bell. I've done security as a bouncer for many years, so there was countless numbers of those too, but there's well, been that many. There's been that many crazy situations I've been in, bro. It's hard to pinpoint one in particular. Do you know what I mean? Honestly, there's been that many crazy situations I've been in. It's hard to go, this was the worst or this was the maddest. There's been, you wouldn't even believe me, half of them. Like, Is there one where you've been outnumbered, but you and the bouncers came through or, or something like that? Well, mate, there's been, like, before I turned 18, I was jumped by five or six fellas on okay. numerous occasions, like so many right. times. So, so set it up. Where was that one at? That sounds interesting to me right away. Um, we were the place in Dunmurray. This was that I was very young, I was 16 in Dunmurray, and there was five or six guys, older men when they're about 20s and 30s, and I was 16. And they beat up one of my friends, and we went to go and fight my friend. And Where was that? It's a place called Dunmurray. It's I live, I lived in an area called Twinbrook, and yeah. Dunmurray is like a five minute walk from Twinbrook. So we walked down to fight my friend, 
and the five or six guys were there and I ended up fighting. All my friends were quite young and they were a bit afraid. I thought, fuck it, I'm going to fight them. And I ended, <laughs> up fighting, I ended up fighting five or six guys by myself and like they got a few shots in, but I put down four or five of those guys. So they ended up worse off than me. Um, and that's like, bro, like that's, I could tell you 10 stories like that. I'm not being funny. There's so many stories like that I could tell you. I don't want to come across big headed like oh, I'm a big guy fighting the streets, you know what I mean? Yeah. But in so many of those situations, like if you ask any of my friends, they'll say, yeah, I could tell you 10 of those things he's been in. And there's been <laughs> guys with knives and battles and fucking machetes and it's just. <laughs> Bell thought machete. me that Oh, mate, yeah. So, oh, mate, was, that at, I mean. was that at the club or was, where was that at? No, people out in the street trying to fight in the street with machetes. Jeez. Wow. Mate, that's, but that's, if you ask anybody in Belfast, it's like, yeah, it's, that's not that crazy. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. when I first met my girlfriend, I tell her these stories and she's like, no, that's not normal. That's not normal way to live. But I was like, no. Anybody in our, in our age group was like, no, that's part of it. What's Dunbury? Is that like where the nightclubs are or is that the docks or what? what is it? No, it's a, it's like a housing estate. It's a, we live in a state called Twinbrook. I did. And then yeah. Dunmurray, which was like an area, was a five minute walk. Yeah. But I worked in Belfast city center where all the nightclubs were for years. And I've seen some crazy stuff there too. But obviously you're professional, you're working, so you can't go a bit crazy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's nuts, man. So how long did you bounce for? From I was 16, 17 until about two years ago. You were a 16 year old bouncer? When I was 16, I was like 130 kilos, like 265, 270 pounds. Massive. Wow. Lifting, I was trained to be a powerlifter, like a strong man, and then I started doing MMA instead. So I was always so a big guy. This was when you were in high school and you were a bouncer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And and how did that work out where, I mean, I'm sure there was alcohol involved. I know it's probably 18 and over over there, but still, like, yeah. Were you allowed to bounce? Were you like in the door, or could you do the? Could you roam the, the bar? I, I, mostly when I was younger, I did inside the bar mostly because I was young. Most of that was in there, but as I got a bit older, I was always in the front door. So, mm. you ever get a bottle cracked over your head? Yeah, quite a few times. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, so no big deal. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, twice yesterday. Yeah. yeah bro. <laughs> I mean, you ask any one of my friends, I'm like, yeah, it was just, it's normal. It's just, it's not a big deal. Like. Damn, dude. We got to have you on more often. I want to hear some of these. We'll leave you alone now because you got a camp. You got a big fight coming up. But damn, I'm, I'm pumped up. When they gave us the list, I'm not going to lie to you, Carl. When they gave us the list, I was like, oh, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Oh, shit, we got to get to know this guy. I didn't know too much about yeah. you, but now you're almost at the top of well, that list. I'll, I'll get me the to write in all the face stories so I have them ready to go for you. With all the craziest ones, we'll pick the modest ones. I'm having them ready to go for you. Yes, mm-hmm. and you're good at interviews, so keep doing them. Just be yourself. Just be yourself, man. You're really good at this. Thank you so much for the time on Junkie Radio. Best of luck on the 22nd. Huge fight there in front of your home crowd. That could be a dream come true for you. I appreciate it, brother. Thank you very much. That means a lot. Thank you very much. All right. Take care. I appreciate having you on, guys. Thank you for your time. I appreciate that.